Hi everyone, John and Sean here, and while we aren't official Mythbusters, we are technical advisors and experienced automotive enthusiasts here at Summit Racing. Through the years of restoring, tuning, fabricating, and helping others build their dream, we've run across some common myths and misconceptions which we felt would be beneficial to discuss. For this video, we're going to cover three myths that could cost your vehicle additional power and performance. Myth number one, engine airflow. Bigger is better, right? There's a tendency among well-intended enthusiasts to choose bigger components in an effort to achieve bigger power and better performance. Bigger carburetor, bigger cylinder head ports, bigger cam. The dyno sheets and the time slips are in, and they're clear that bigger is not always better. Let's start by looking at carburetors, for example. CFM, or cubic feet per minute, is the rating used to define the velocity of air which travels through the air horns of the carburetor feeding your engine. Proper air to fuel ratio is critical for optimal combustion, fuel economy, horsepower, and torque. CFM ratings can make or break a great engine build. If the CFM rating you've selected is too high for your engine, the larger air horn inlet will significantly slow down the air velocity. The loss of air velocity means the combustion chamber will not fill to the capacity required for a proper air fuel ratio. This is one reason why bigger is not always better when selecting a proper carb and will actually cause your engine to put out less torque and horsepower. This, as well as other factors such as carb tuning, can cause your street vehicle to have poor low end torque and if you drag race, significantly lower 60 foot times. The bottom line is it's important to find a happy medium when selecting a carburetor. If your CFM calculations have you between sizes, we usually recommend that you go with a smaller carburetor. The smaller carburetor will have better low-end response and low-end power will make street cars easier and more enjoyable to drive. Not sure about your required CFM? We supply a digital CFM calculator you can use for free on our website at summitracing.com. Sean, what other areas could CFM play a role in your engine build? It's a great question, John. Let's talk about CFM and cylinder heads for a moment. As a rule of thumb, smaller intake port volumes will produce more low-end torque and crisper throttle response, while larger intake ports allow more flow at higher RPMs. Therefore, in most street applications and for the occasional weekend racer, smaller intake ports often deliver better results while larger intake ports would likely cause the torque numbers to fall off. On the other hand, Larger intake ports are beneficial if you're building an engine with a large displacement or if you're building a smaller displacement requiring additional CFM for reaching higher RPM in a dedicated race-only situation. So we've covered some concerns with the bigger is better motto when it comes to carbs and cylinder heads. But what about cams? Yes, as you may have guessed, the biggest duration and lift numbers aren't always the best choice here either. This brings us to myth number two in our bigger is better conversation. Advertised cam duration is a good measurement of cam size. But is it? Actually, you'll want to downplay the role of advertised duration when choosing a camshaft. And here's why. When shopping for an aftermarket camshaft, you'll notice many camshaft manufacturers will list two different duration values. One is advertised duration, and the other is duration at 50 thousandths inch lift. Let's look at the differences. Advertised cam duration is the degree of crankshaft rotation that the lifter is raised more than a predetermined amount and varies between manufacturers. So if we attempt to select a camshaft based on advertised duration, it's not an apples to apples comparison. What you really wanna pay attention to is the duration at 50 thousandths inch lift. This is an industry standard way of comparing duration among manufacturers and is a better way to compare between the different camshafts. Sean, what's myth number three? The third and final myth that we are going to expose today deals with the exhaust system. You've probably heard something like back pressure is always good or you must have back pressure for the best performance. Now the main purpose of your exhaust system is to get rid of spent gases as quickly and efficiently as possible. However, back pressure makes it harder to do this. So why do some people say back pressure is good? A lot of it comes down to confusion between back pressure and exhaust scavenging. Exhaust scavenging occurs as a pulse of exhaust gas runs through the exhaust pipe and a little area of vacuum or low pressure is created behind it. This vacuum or low pressure area helps pull along the next exhaust pulse and helps better evacuate the exhaust gases coming from your combustion chamber. 
It even helps pull the next intake charge into your combustion chamber, allowing your engine to operate with a cleaner intake charge during the combustion process. This is why Ecolength headers are the most preferred header design, so the exhaust pulses don't crash into each other, but the pulses pull the next one away from the engine. So, where does the confusion between scavenging and back pressure come in? This confusion occurs due to the small diameter exhaust components required to maximize this scavenging effect and its performance benefits, particularly at low RPMs. So, while this may be more restrictive, it does increase the exhaust velocity and that provides the benefit, not the back pressure. Keep in mind though, that there is a compromise when choosing the correct exhaust pipe diameter. While a small pipe creates a greater exhaust velocity at low RPM, your engine could ideally use a larger diameter pipe at high RPM. So it's really a matter of choosing the correct pipe size that matches the power and the purpose of the engine. Finally, if your application is running a supercharger or a turbocharger, the incoming air is being forced into the combustion chamber. Therefore, once the crammed air fuel mixture explodes, there's a lot more exhaust gases that need to be removed and even quicker. In this case, bigger is definitely better with the exhaust system. So, we are going to officially label these myths busted. That's it for now, but be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more performance myths as well as helpful how-to videos, installations, and much more.